So here's the thing. You're stuck in tutorial hell, right? The, the, the big thing with that is that the reason why that I feel people get stuck in tutorial hell is because people are scared to actually go out and build something on their own. I think that's why people are stuck in tutorial hell, in my opinion. You know, like tutorials give you a very, very comfortable environment where you have an instructor that are explaining these concepts for you. But also at the end of each like lesson or something, you're building a project, right? Based off of the concepts that you've learned or in some cases, the course will also have a long standing project throughout the whole thing. And then over the course, you're learning different concepts and then you're adding those concepts into the project, whichever way it's still a comfortable environment because someone's hand feeding you what to do. And then the problem that is that, oh, me as the person who's taking the tutorial, I want to then keep taking these because, you know, that's what's helping me build these projects. That's what's helping me learn. Um, so that what you just keep going through all these different tutorials, tutorials, and you're never really doing anything on your own, right? That's the loop of tutorial hell in a nutshell, essentially. So the main thing is that you just really have to stop taking the tutorials. It's very, very intimidating and very, very scary to do that, right? To stop taking the tutorials because it's all you know to do is to log in, get on a tutorial, follow it, build it, you're done, right? But that's not really the way to learn. Um, it's a great way to learn at the beginning, but the real way to do things is to build projects. In my opinion, to slowly, I wouldn't say cold turkey cut it off, right? Like obviously tutorials are great, but the more and more you take, the more and more bogged your memory and your knowledge is going to be. So in my opinion, to slowly on-ramp is like, try to remember some of the concepts that you've learned in the tutorials and then try and build projects, micro projects on your own using those concepts without referring to the tutorial or trying your best not to, right? That way you can kind of build a habit of building something. And as soon as you run into a problem, you go and reach for a solution if you can't really figure it out on your own. And that'll teach you how to use Google. That'll teach you how to use Stack Overflow or whatever other resources you use to like find uh, solutions to problems. And then that way you get out of tutorial hell, right? Now you're just building projects for yourself. Now you're just looking up issues whenever you come by them and then you learn that way so i think that's like the solution to tutorial hell and how you can really get out of it that's just my thinking though like it could be very very different and and you can go about it in a different way for sure but you need to slowly on-ramp yourself to stop taking tutorials if you already have taken a couple or you already have done a couple things in that tutorial i would say branch off and start building your own project you can do the same project from scratch that you built in the tutorial, but do it on your own or try to make a clone of something, try to do something else. Obviously, there's more methods of how to get out of tutorial hub, but if you're stuck, that would be my suggestion on how to get out of it, because trust me, I was in it too. It sucks. It is what it is. It's part of the process, to be honest. So I wouldn't feel bad that you're stuck in it, and especially starting out like that's kind of the way to do it. You know, it's it's easy when you're starting out to be stuck in tutorial. So that would be my advice. Hopefully that helped and made sense to anybody here, really. But Mango, if that like, let me know if that helps or if you need any other like clarification on things. All right. Thanks, bro. Yeah, for sure. Let me catch up with stream. So we created for developers who have ex experience. They just want to learn a new framework or a new language. Uh, I wouldn't say all of them, though. Some of them are aimed for people who are starting to get into it. So yeah, you're 100 percent right. The fear of starting your own project is very real. It is very real and it's very, very hard to get out of it. So that's why you kind of just have to do like tell yourself that you got to step out of that at fear and like take it head on. That's the most important part here. How did you balance learning new things while also building projects? Uh, Well, it, it's easy and I kind of just touched on it. Right. So while I'm building projects, like, for example, this app right here, I'm building it and I'm using new technologies. So not that React Native is new to me, but I haven't really built a full fledged app by myself on React Native, right? So I'm using that. I'm using TypeScript, never use TypeScript. So I'm using that. Um, I am going to be implementing uh, GraphQL and a backend. I've never used those. The way to balance it is just diving in head first, right? So I'm using what, what it is I know about React Native. So I'm here now, right? There's a lot of things that I don't know about React Native. And what am I doing? I'm here on stream. I'm looking up documentation. I'm learning from you guys and I'm not reaching for a tutorial. So diving in head first and failing is probably one of the best ways, at least for me to, to, to learn these things, right? I never would have thought that I'd be able to build any of this, like implementing a modal and like implementing freaking uh, 
React Native maps and all that stuff, right? Diving in head first, in my opinion, is the best way to balance it because as I'm looking up things, as I'm failing, I'm learning new concepts. I'm learning new patterns on how to build certain things and, and it just sticks, right? That would be the way that I balance uh, learning new things and building projects is I'm learning while building those projects.